very good morning to you guys welcome to asake online this is the breakfast club my name is brighton you know in Bola, we are facing more than 120 hours water shedding and many areas have gone uh, for months without water and also the different alternatives that the council is trying to push to get water for Bola. this drought and also this lack of rainfall is causing all these things and today to help me unpack the issue of water and how we can use water in terms of recycled water and in terms of uh, different places in terms of our homes and so on is towards this more innovator into water systems good morning to him towards this morning how are you i'm fine how are you sir yeah, let's talk about the issue of recycling what is recycling for of water recycling water is basically in the context of Bulawayo. i would say the water we're getting from our supply side and then after using it let's say bathing and flushing down the toilet we treat it and then we utilize it again mm -hmm. hence recycling but when it comes to maybe your work, right, to deal with issues of water and innovation yes. and so on, speak to us more about the importance and also maybe educate the, the, the nation about recycling of water. Okay, as we look at the climate currently, it's changing. Mm -hmm. And Wulawayo is, the, I, would, I wouldn't say a crisis. I think it's an opportunity for us to innovate more on how to use water sustainably. Mm -hmm. So instead of just using water once, let's make it... Um, Go an extra mile. How do we do that? Um, when we flush, mm -hmm. let's have a system that removes impurities, mm -hmm. and then that water is pure again, and then we use it again, mm -hmm. and again, and again. Mm -hmm. um, this process is happening naturally in the water cycle. If you notice, um, I'll give you an example of feces. When an animal has, I don't know, made droppings there, the yeah. feces are wet, mm -hmm. then they dry up. There was water, but then the sun evaporated that water, and then it condenses up in the clouds, and then it rains and comes back down. Mm -hmm. Comes back down. So, when you look at um, that process, it takes time in nature, but through innovations and um, research, that process can be shortened and made um, to happen in a short space of time. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. speak to us more about other countries, maybe uh, in, in our region or outside our region that have done recycling of water and using more water for drinking. Okay, um, I know of Namibia. Namibia is in a water scarce region and they recycle the water. They augment the water yeah. supply with, by recycling. And then I know of the UAE, the Dubai, they also recycle water. Mm -hmm. So the technology is there. Those countries are using it. And I'm, I'm open to the idea of it being employed in Ulawa. Mm -hmm. But if I compare this water that I'm carrying right now yes. and compare the water that is at Kami Dam River, right? Yes. Compare the two uh, types of water. Yes. Which one is cleaner and which one can you say is what's the difference between the two? Water is water. Mm -hmm. We if you look at the the composition of water, it's two H2O. Mm -hmm. There's no waste water or water water. Water is water. So what we're interested in is H2O. We need to remove all that those impurities. So if we look at Kami, um, Kami water, yes, you're right to say it's dirty as compared to the, the example you gave. Mm -hmm. But um, Kami water can be treated to that level. And we find that there are guidelines that um, need to, that are followed mm -hmm. after treating that water yeah. that protect mm -hmm. um, everyone. So I think it's, there's an SI on that. And then the World Health Organization also has guidelines to that. Mm -hmm. These guidelines are meant to prevent um, the spread of um, diseases through water. Mm -hmm. yes. For example, let's say Kami Dam water right, is recycled, or yes. Kuza River is recycled water. Right? Yes. Let's talk about the health issues there. Can you use that water for drinking or cooking? Can you use that water for just water in the garden or industrial use? Or you can now also use that water for human consumption? Given the perception of the people of Bulawayo, yeah. we are a bit squirmish when it comes to what is termed toilet water mm -hmm. so it's a perception blockade once we get that blockade out of our minds we can then start um, um, exploring um, we can start exploring drinking that water mm -hmm. because after the treatment process that water is as good as the water you're buying in these bottles um, mm -hmm. from the shops mm -hmm. so that mental blockade is a major major inhibitor to um, us using that water and I believe it's a matter of um, lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we need to spread um, the information that 
it's possible to treat that water to a high yeah. quality mm -hmm. and then people can drink it. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? Um, simple. We need to start at a young age. We need to target schools, school going children. And on that light, um, there's a program that we are still working on um, under the Green Night Initiative and the Rotary Club of Metobos and Waste Money, which is termed the Water Heroes. Mm -hmm. So we want to stretch the kids' minds and then they start to conceptualize and mm -hmm. visualize that it's quite possible. Mm -hmm. So start at a young age, grow up with it. And it's possible. We have done tests from Mkuza, Mkuza water, right? Can you speak to us more about that, what we're doing in terms of testing that water from Mkuza? Okay, yes. Mkuza, if you notice, is run by a plant, is overrun by a plant called water hyacinth. It's covering the whole dam. Yeah. So I was looking at um, utilizing that plant for making cattle feed. So I had to test if that water where the plant is growing is free of heavy metals. So I found that um, the amount of lead was beyond what was higher than the recommended amount. Yeah. So that's what stopped um, me proceeding with those tests mm -hmm. of uh, making feed from the water essence. So it, doesn't, it didn't recycle that water or the, the no, plant? No, no, no. It was the plant. So in terms of making feed, mm -hmm. that plant was then um, deemed unfit. Mm -hmm. But then it can be used for other things like energy generation. Yeah. So biogas, if that plant is cut mm -hmm. up, you can generate biogas for cooking. Mm -hmm. Let's speak more about the issue of perception. You know, the issue of recycling water has been topical in Bula because yes. of the coming water issue there and also the lack of water in Bula. Yes. How do we change perceptions and narratives to say this water is not good for people, this water is good or ideal for people? First, I feel we need to work on our mindset as a people. When it comes to water, we feel like it's all right. Mm -hmm. You know, therefore we treat it, we abuse water. Yeah. Um, if I was to ask you how much water you use to bath in a week, mm -hmm you wouldn't be exactly able to give me the yeah. exact quantity because you feel it's your right. Yeah. As a result, you don't take care of it. So it begins the, we, need, we really need to know the economic value of water. Uh, and then we can um, treat it better. Mm -hmm. So I feel the city of Ulawa needs to really engage um, media partners and the academia, mm -hmm. NAST, you know, so that these costs are really brought forward to the mm -hmm. people and the people really understand mm -hmm. that when they're paying that 30 US dollars per month, it's not the actual amount mm -hmm. that they're supposed to pay. That water has been pumped from Umzimwani, treated at Criterion. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the costs have been, in, in, what you call yeah. it, in, increasing. Yeah. By the time it comes to you, it's subsidized, mm -hmm. you know. So you find that Water is not a profit-making mm -hmm. aspect of um, their, their duties. Mm -hmm. So it's actually making a loss for the city council. Mm -hmm. Hence why, when you look at um, the investments, um, we're always waiting for someone to come and yeah. give us a lump sum of money mm -hmm. towards the water. If the water was really packed at its price, there would be a surplus. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to maybe increase the number of dams, um, and the treatment plants expand mm -hmm. the capacities. Mm -hmm. But because we're operating, I believe we're operat operating at a loss, we always want to go out, look for yeah. someone with yeah. a big bag and then give us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, need, we really need to change our perception on the value of water. Yeah, yeah. there have been to a number of countries um, yes. towards this day. And also what have we learned in terms of recycling and what can we learn as well in terms of recycling water, be it Netherlands, be it Dubai, what can we learn as well in terms of importance of recycling water? From those countries, um, we can share knowledge, knowledge sharing. Um, I was recently at the city of Cape Town, and if you are familiar, a couple of years ago, they were facing what is called day zero. Yeah. Day zero, and they open the tap and there's no water. Mm -hmm. But they managed to avert day zero and stretch the little resources that they had until the rains eventually came and they didn't have to, you know, um, go for long hours yeah. without water. So just a couple of hours away, mm -hmm. we need synergies with those guys. You know, we are not importing their, yeah. solu their solutions, but they have a certain mindset mm -hmm. that evolved from that scary situation of day zero. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, knowledge sharing with um, countries that, are, that have been in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. 
so that we are not really arguing on mm -hmm. is it safe, is it what, what, but we are working with solutions that have worked in other places. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always hear the issue of water harvesting. You know, when it's raining outside, sometimes we put our buckets outside, yes. that water, and some people say this water is safe and, and clean and so on. What are some of the innovative ways we can adopt as well in terms of water harvesting? Water harvesting, we're always watching. 2019, I'd like to believe, was Cyclone. Was it Idai? Idai, yeah. Yes, Cyclone Idai. There was a lot of water. Mm -hmm. We're watching that water. It's been about what, less than five years. So it speaks that um, we need a resilient mm -hmm. water harvesting um, technique. Either the council subsidizes the bills and the rates mm -hmm. for someone who has a church or that is connected to their cutter. Mm -hmm. They are cutters, they are roofing cutters. So let's say, for instance, if you invest and then you connect your, let's say, your toilet mm -hmm. to that water, some of your rates, you know, mm -hmm. are, you give people incentives mm -hmm. for harvesting rainwater mm -hmm. because it's going to be at their expense. So that's one way I would like to believe um, we can approach this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ella, one of you is speaking about the issue of ND, HD, HOD, and so on. Let's talk to us about that in simple terms to a viewer at home. What is ND in terms of water? Even if you're holding your bucket of water, there's something called ND or HOD. What's that? Explain to us. Okay. That. So if you are buying bottled water, they are, um, if, you, if you look at the, there's usually a sticker yeah. by the side. So COD and BOD. Mm -hmm. So that's the measure, they are what you call parameters yes. that they are used to measure the quality of water. Mm -hmm. So when you find that it's written empty, it's not detectable, which means that the water has undergone sufficient processes mm -hmm. to remove the impurities mm -hmm. such that they're not detectable and it's safe to drink. Mm -hmm. And um, all the water that is coming from the taps has gone through the processes and for it to be released, mm -hmm. If you go to Criterion, you'll find out they do tests mm -hmm. continuously, yeah. continuous to make sure that those parameters are met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's come to Bulawayo, the issue of Kamit Dam. You know, people can speak about this thing, Kamit Dam, water being recycled. Some are saying no, uh, some are saying yes, we want the water, uh, should come to Bulawayo, let's recycle this water. Speak to us more about that. Is the Kamit water, dam, uh, Kamit water coming from the Kamit Dam the safe for drinking after recycling it? Yes. Um, so what then, I think, the argument has to be towards what measures can you put mm -hmm. that make sure that all the water that is coming from coming dam after yep. treating it is safe and how much will it cost mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you keep on testing it mm -hmm. and people are, are alert to the quality of the water. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the mindset should be like, what exactly do we need? What sort of technologies? Mm -hmm. Who, which companies are doing those kind of technologies? Are they willing to partner with? Yep. The city of Bulawayo and NAST. I keep referring to NAST because yeah. you need the knowledge institution. Mm -hmm. We have big brains there. If, if we're saying, let's build another dam, right? Um, I forgot the name. There should be statisticians, mathematicians, and the civil engineering department of NAST mm -hmm. sitting down saying, okay, fine. If we build the dam, what are the projections? How much water are we actually going to get? And then they model that, you know? Then they bring it to the mm -hmm. to the stakeholders, which is the residents and everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you can then have a clear view of what's going on. Yep. And then you look also at the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If we build that dam, right, mm -hmm. the pipes are aging. We know that. Yeah. If you look at Masocha Road, there's always a burst there mm -hmm. in front of Roseyad. Now you build the other dam, you're pumping that water, mm -hmm. the pipes keep going off. Yeah. What does it mean to someone in Pumula South? Are they going to get good quality water, mm -hmm. will they need another dam in another two years because the infrastructure is also aging. So we have two problems that we're facing. Yeah. Aging infrastructure and climate change. So we need to find a balance. Mm -hmm. We cannot um, build our way out of the situation. We really need to sit down with the brains, which is NAST and everyone else who has um, undergone through a situation and we come up with a, a solid Solid way forward. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is Asaki Online. This is the Breakfast Club. I'm talking to Mtogozi Simo, who's into innovations and water systems. It's been about the issue of recycling the Mtogozi. Let's go back again to the issue of climate. Take us through the process now. In terms of if you want to recycle that water, what should be done? Testing the water up to the point where it comes from our tips and we drink it. Take us through the process. Okay, first, there should be a feasibility study done. Mm -hmm. um, how much, what are we talking about? How much 
um, contamination is yeah. there. We know what's there. It's quantified and then how much is required to treat that water, what sort of technology will be feasible for Bulawayo. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at the city of Cape Town, when they were facing um, the day zero, mm -hmm. people were all like, why not just get water from the sea, mm -hmm. the next to the sea? That is very expensive technology. And recently I found out that it was not really 100% meeting what it was supposed to do. But now imagine you've invested mm -hmm. um, taxpayers' money yeah. to that and it's not working. Mm -hmm. So a feasibility study should be accelerated, mm -hmm. the water um, characteristics done, and then technology, relevant technology, looked into, and then a development partner who has the capabilities of building such a plant engaged. Mm -hmm. um, not that, um, not, not to gamble, you know, because water is a very delicate issue and mm -hmm. you can basically kill the whole population if you don't do it right, yeah. you know. So after that plant is constructed, mm -hmm. it will be accelerated now because we're in a, a tight situation. Um, and then from there, we look at how are we going to link it to the existing network mm -hmm. because we don't want to build a treatment plant and then now you have to redo the whole network we need to um piggyback on what, what already is there mm -hmm. so that we try and subsidize the cost mm -hmm. there's been myths around this should, should come again yes. people are saying that people are dead were thrown inside there it's some yes. human waste and so on yes you said in, to email on uh, 60 percent of human is um, water right yes. speak, to me, speak to me more about that say you get what is being thrown inside the uh, quantum cycle is more water yes. to more about that uh, it might it might sound insensitive yeah. but to some viewers but the honest truth is um well was human beings are six percent water mm -hmm. right so for every 10 human beings sitting down right mm -hmm. imagine six of them are water yeah. so most likely you've drank your great grandfather <laughs> a molecule that was on them mm -hmm. so you've drank it and you didn't know mm -hmm. the issue is um not knowing yeah. and knowing now they say there are bodies there that were thrown um, in the dam. I cannot verify or say it's not, but mm -hmm. if we look at Umzingwani, mm -hmm. where we're getting out there, our water, I believe maybe there will be people who have drowned, there are cows that have drowned there, there's things that are there, but because it's far from us, we don't really think about what's going on yeah. at our supply dams. Um, we sort of push, push it up further away, mm -hmm. but calm is closer to it. Yeah. You say it, you can smell it, you can see it. Mm -hmm. That's why we're a bit skeptical about water. But if we were to move Kami Dam, maybe another 20 kilometers away from pe where people can smell it and see it mm -hmm. and just tell them we're getting water from Kami mm -hmm. and they didn't know what was going on. They'll yeah. be, I believe, um, um, cool with drinking the water. Mm -hmm. So it's an issue of perception. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you've, you've seen many kiosks around Bula and many poles around Bula being, yes. being, being, being done there. Yes. How safe is the water we're drinking from the poles? Remember, like just uh, drilling a bowl, just taking water from the outside, is that water drinking from a bowl? Recently, there's a, I, I read an article about um, bowls in Harare being contaminated. Mm -hmm. So bowl water is not as safe as we want to believe in yeah. because there's an underground stream that is recharging these wells. Mm -hmm. And if there's a contaminated river source flowing close by, mm -hmm. that contamination will go down yeah. into the ground and into the well. And if you test the water, you'll find that it's got um, what are called coliforms, mm -hmm. fecal coliforms. This is bacteria that you find in the human gut. So it tells you that there's sewage contamination. And mm -hmm. this is problematic because once you ingest that, that's why you have people with running um, um, tummies and then the choleras, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. That's how they are spread. You spoke about the issue of metals being found at Umkuza, is it Umkuza River, right? You spoke about those metals. Speak, yes. speak more about those metals. What do they mean in terms of their metals in this water? Okay, so there are what are called heavy metals which have to be regulated mm -hmm. and controlled by the same SI and the whole standard, uh, World Health Organization stand mm -hmm. guidelines so that the water is safe for drinking. The problem with the heavy metals is that hu they accumulate in the human body. Mm -hmm and in the animal also, and then you have what is called heavy metal poisoning. Yeah. Um, characteristic in, in animals, it's concentrated in the livers and the kidneys, and then the animal has no way of removing yeah. it. So the human 
bought is designed in such a way that whatever you take in, you can pass out. Mm -hmm. Liquid, solid, you've got that. But for heavy metals, we're not advanced mm -hmm. in that. So it accumulates and you die. And the issue of Mkuza is, I believe, the old and industrial era. Yeah. When the wastewater treatment plants broke mm -hmm. down, they failed to, you know, remove that from the wastewater and then as a result it accumulated in the dams mm -hmm. where i found um the contamination in the what you call it in the water ice and mm -hmm. in numkusa i want to see water by uh, the cpt there around nasa and rpz yes, 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 water yes, yes. speak to speak us more about that water is that water safe where is it coming from they say there's an underground um, stream that is running across Wulawayo. Mm -hmm. And there's a basement at NASA there, mm -hmm. so it they all, they need to pump it out and then they let it run out. Mm -hmm. In terms of sustainability, now how much water can you sustainably pump out and then treat and then give people? Mm -hmm. You don't want to put a ten thousand or a twenty thousand liter um, producing plant mm -hmm. at the expense of the taxpayers' money. You invest forty million there. Yeah it doesn't make economic sense. So I think it will be cheaper just to let it flow. Mm -hmm. I think that is what is happening there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe in closing, towards this, let's look at the issue now of the short-term solutions for Volaris water problems. Yes. You know, there have been bowls, there have been water cures, there's not the glass book damping, yes, yes. there's Kwai Shangan. Yes. Speak to us more about the short-term solutions before we look at the long-term solutions for Volaris. Um, First of all, I would like to address the issue of bowls. Mm -hmm. They might seem like a short-term solution, but how sustainable are they? Imagine you're driving to Bulawayo and the first thing you see is every yard has a Jojo tank and a bowl. What are we doing to the groundwater mm -hmm. down there? What, what does it mean to the wetlands? Now they're mm -hmm. not tapping into that groundwater. Mm -hmm. They'll dry up. You find that there are trees with shallow roots. They'll dry. Mm -hmm. Now we've created another problem. So short term is we need to manage our water consumption. We need to be more conscious about how much water are we using as individuals. How do we do that? We need smart technological advances in our metering systems, which tell us in real time how much water we are consuming, mm -hmm. and then we can adjust it. I mean, we're now in the age of yeah. AI. I believe site has two AIs now, mm -hmm. yeah. male and female, yeah. serving each gender balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's AI for that. You know, we need to start pushing AI into mm -hmm. the Bulawayo um, water crisis space. Mm -hmm. So. Let's look into that. Let's get the innovators mm -hmm. involved. Yeah. That was the issue of the prepaid water meters, right? Was it yes. and other and other areas, right? But Bula related those things. What do you think of the prepaid water meters? Prepaid water meters, I'm not a fan of those because they deprive humans of the basic water right, you know. Yeah. Um I would say smart meters that tell you that are linked to your phone are better, you know, yeah. then prepaid meters. If you had an application that is directly linked to how much water you're consum mm -hmm. consuming, yeah. you know, and the family was involved, mm -hmm. you know, you know who the, who uses more water, yeah. you then, you know, tell them, ah, let's try and mi mi minimize the water use. So mm -hmm. if I was to cut my water use by, let's say, 25 liters, you 25, and you spread that message around mm -hmm. your neighborhood and multiply that by the number of people in Bulawayo. Mm -hmm. We've basically built a dam, yeah. in theory, mm -hmm. by cutting down the water we're using. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lastly, let's speak about the issue of recycling. What can you say to Mama, Kai, Obugele, Shole about the importance of recycling? And what can you say in terms of educating them about recycling? There's the camera and they talk to them about recycling. Uh, recycling wastewater, um, or water per se, is not new. Singa we tugi ngoba um we are now in a drought situation. I would say let's be open to um ideas and possibilities around this. Let's not cut it down, you know, singa Let's hear what is there, put all our solutions on the table. If someone is comfortable with um using recycled water, let's go for it. Imagine if there were free solar powered showers from recycled water in every community. Now, some are not boiling water on the stove, but there's now, uh, you know, a communal bathing area, you know, where you go and you tap there, you pay maybe one rand, you use uh, hot water from a solar geyser that is recycled. Maybe let's start looking at those approaches to make people more acceptable to this. So, yeah.
that's my takeaway. Thanks so much for your time this morning coming for coming on the breakfast club. Yeah, well, Thanks so much. So. There you have it, guys. The importance of recycling water. That's some talk is more with They're speaking to us about the importance of recycling water and speaking in particular about Kami water and also Mkuza water there that was doing in terms of recycling and touching on the issue of research that he's been doing there is, is, is part of his innovations. Hope you guys enjoy the show and please do pass your comments on the comment section there and do follow site on all platforms YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, as well as Instagram. From myself, Brighton, it's bye for now.